Okay everyone, today we're going to be melting down some old silver jewellery that I managed to pick up on eBay for a reasonable price for a reasonable price of about 23 Australian dollars per ounce of silver. Now I doubt that all of this is actual proper silver. We've got a few good pieces here. Some of them fall to bits as you can see, hence why they're being sold. Got a few nice gangster chains, some nice earrings. We've got a few rings. Some nice Harley Davidson rings. And there's a goddamn kookaburra that won't shut up. Thank you. Thank you, kookaburra, for shutting up. <laughs> probably choose a few ones that I don't want to melt like things like this ring here it's actually pretty good I don't think I'll melt those ones almost all of these have a nice 925 marking as you can see inside of there so they should all be silver but you never know there's probably a fair percentage of this that is fake silver as a lot of it comes out of China but we'll melt it all down the same and see which ones melt and which ones don't They've even got a Tiffany & Co earring thing that's square and pretty ugly, in my opinion. <laughs> now I'm sure someone will tell me that some of these things are worth more than the silver they're made out of, so make sure to comment that below so I know that I've wasted my money. Right, I don't reckon I'm going to be able to fit it all in one, but we'll melt down these little smaller bits first. So we're going to melt down 120 grams of this silver. It's about all we can fit in the crucible. So first we're just going to put on some borax to protect the crucible. So it'll last longer. So when you melt borax it pretty much just turns into glass. So this acts as like a little barrier between the crucible and the molten silver. Notice how the centers of the Harley Davidson rings aren't melting as readily as everything else. This indicates that they might be something other than 925 silver. My guess would be they're made out of nickel which has a much higher melting point than silver. At this point my torch just decided to stop for no reason and I didn't feel like having to remelt the big lump of silver so I went for the pour. It was quite difficult to keep the silver molten as I moved it to be poured into the mold and also I think the mold wasn't quite hot enough something to remember for the future. And as you can see, there's a big lump of slag on the top of the silver. This would most likely be the nickel from the biker rings, which rose to the top as nickel is less dense than silver. It's a beautiful bit of silver underneath. And interestingly, the borax glass in the crucible started making a clinking sound as the glass rapidly cools and cracks. There we have it, the world's most dodgily cast bit of silver you'll ever see anywhere, I promise. <laughs> Along with a big nice lump of slag on top. This stuff here is actually really nice. It's a nice bit of silver here. Beautiful. It's just a shame about that. Well, I'm glad that I saved this other 925 silver chain, I don't know, gangster. Yo, something chain. <laughs> we'll give this one a go. 
considering the first one sort of failed with those dirty old Harley Davidson rings, we might give this one a go. I reckon this one looked pretty cool as it all melts down. And it's all hollow, so now we pour it into a little mold, see if we can make a small bar of silver. And there's a method to our madness of melting holes in this chain, hopefully to avoid any expansion of air trapped inside, which might heat up and expand, which might lead to molten silver being splurted everywhere. This second lot of molten silver is looking so much better than the first without that nickel in it. This one looks like a um, baby's fist, fisting ba- oh, well that's interesting, very odd indeed. This one turned out much better than the first one. Well there you go, we can determine that my casting skills are far from good. <laughs> well hopefully, oh no, look what I've done, this is why. You don't do this inside, it doesn't matter if you do it on an old table. Yes. Whoops. Oh shit, what have I done? There you go, fixed. It's good as new. And that was a hell of a lot harder than I thought it would be. Especially when I've only got two hands. Having to try and keep that silver molten as I pour it. Oh my gosh. In the future, I think it would be a bit easier if I had someone to help me. But I don't think we did too bad today. Managed to do some below average castings, if you want to call it that, of some silver bars. If you can even call them a silver bar. Silver blob is probably more appropriate. But it was still amazing to see that awesome jewellery when it melts and turns to liquid. It's an amazing colour that it makes like nothing else I've ever seen. Yep, so it was pretty fun. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked my very interesting silver casts that I've made here. I'm not sure if I'll be doing that again because it's a hell of a lot of effort for, well, this. <laughs> so our final weigh-in is 116 grams. So let's give it a conservative estimate and say that it would be about 80% silver, including the slag on the top. That would mean this blob was worth just under 50 US dollars, or 65 Australian dollars. And you know what? I think I'll stick to aluminium from now on. That stuff is easy compared to this. <laughs> I'd just like to take a minute to thank all of you who've watched my videos and have subscribed. I really do appreciate it and I plan on improving my video skills and I have some really interesting ideas for new videos that I'm sure you'll enjoy. So thank you, really. My next video will include my skiing doggo that loves to ice skate, as you can see here. If you'd like to see this video, don't forget to subscribe. See ya! Oh.